Okay, our next movie is Spider-Man, directed by cult favorite Sam Raimi. After 17 years in studio development hell, the Marvel Comics superhero finally makes the leap to features with this big, colorful, and mostly triumphant joyride. Tobey Maguire is science nerd Peter Parker, who goes through some startling changes after he's been bitten by a genetically supercharged spider. Kirsten Dunst is Mary Jane Watson, the girl next door. Wow, great reflexes. Well, that seems like a bit of an understatement, but Raimi has the characters giving comic book reactions to the comic book situations. Like here, where aspiring photographer Parker's split personality gives him exclusive access to the mysterious creature who has all of New York caught in his web. Willem Dafoe is the Green Goblin, a scientist who undergoes a mutation that conveniently coincides with the birth of Spider-Man. And not since Lois Lane has a plucky gal in the big city gotten into as many pickles as Mary Jane. In style, story, and tone, Spider-Man has a lot more in common with the first Christopher Reeve Superman than with the original Batman, which had a more conflicted superhero and a much darker and more interesting look. You'd probably be freaking out if you discovered you were part of Rachnid, but Peter's transformation is played mostly for laughs. If it weren't for the occasional voiceover, you'd hardly think he was troubled at all by his fate. But then again, maybe we shouldn't expect the movie to take itself too seriously when the lead is a teenager in tights who bungee jumps across Manhattan. I am giving thumbs up to Spider-Man as an energetic romp. You know, my thumb is down on this movie, but it's sort of a split decision. I do like the details of Spider-Man's origin story, and Tobey Maguire does a good job of playing the insecure and shy Peter yeah. Parker. But the action scenes lack presence and conviction. When you see Spider-Man flying through the skies and leaping between buildings, he looks like an artificial cartoon character. He moves too fast without the weight and presence of flesh and blood. The movie could have done more with the scenes where Peter Parker learns of his new powers, and the special effects could have taken themselves more seriously and not seem so lightweight and perfunctory. There's a moment when he comes from the top of a skyscraper all the way down to the street level and back up again, and I never felt for one second that that was like a 140-pound teenage boy. It looked more like Mighty Mouse. Uh, see, I would disagree. Mighty Mouse, yeah, a little bit. It does have that, you know, that colorful comic book feel yeah, and we uh -huh. do agree that there should have been I think a little darker side I mean if this happened to you, you'd be going my god I'm you know I'm gonna be this spider mm -hmm. creature but I would disagree with you about the special effects I thought when spider-man is going through the streets of Manhattan it really looked like he was swinging from building to building and jumping here and sticking against walls here in the in the scene where he has to choose between Mary Jane and the the trolley car yeah, where it is full that of scene, kids. For that's pretty good stuff that looks pretty okay, good to take me. take that scene where he has yeah. to decide and without giving too much away he winds up with a trolley car. That's okay. a good scene. So, okay, it isn't because you never get the feeling that there's real weight involved. There's one See, perfunctory I, I, shot of the spider web kind of pulling off against <laughs> whatever it's hanging from. But you don't get the idea that real tension and real you risk to, are involved. to have some sort of special effect where people were pushing you in your seat so you'd feel the weight of this stuff. I felt I that I visually... The sound is great when yes, the cables are, are flicking no, through the no, air. No, no, visually, and it, I, I thought it looked pretty good.